Hi guys, welcome back to Morrowind. We are near the final act of the game. We completed the fourth and fifth trial. But now, we must go talk to Vivek, establish a plan, and defeat Dagoth Ur in his Red Mountain. Let's head for Vivek and let's get started. We're headed to cool, and then, uh, sorry, I haven't gone here yet. I've been a lot around Warren. Also, you're probably wondering what that is. See, I haven't been, I haven't been up there yet. That was me, uh, in no clip, trying to get the thumbnails. And, uh, cause I, I wanted to get, as you can probably tell, all the thumbnails in, the, all, in all the videos are me, like, in the air. Because <laughs> I thought it'd be nice to have, like, good shots like that for thumbnails. So, the only way to do that is no clip. And I was looking for spots around the map to do them. And to do the intro for it as well. I had to go straight across. Anyway, we shall continue to Vivek. Alrighty, back in Vivek. So we took the silt strider over there. I don't know why I ran around this way, but it's out of habit, I guess. We're sitting in over there. Okay. But we gotta go talk to Vivek. This is right below the Bardow. Meteor. Okay. The Ministry of Truth. But we're, we're gonna take this boat. Yeah, it took me way too long. Way, way too long to figure out these are here. Way too long. How handy. Super handy. Thank you. Oh, we gotta speak to the Arch Cannon, I think. No, not her. Not you. Where's she at? I can already tell Meet the I'm Arc Cannon. Like the Arc Cannon is in his private quarters, and he very much wishes to speak with you. But I am to warn you. Avoid confrontations with the Ordinators at all costs. The Arc Cannon has spoken with the High Fane Ordinators. But if you are a wanted criminal, they may try to arrest you. If the blood of faithful servants of the temple is spilled, it will make reconciliation all that much more difficult. All right. Go beans. Nice. Right. They're in the they're in the temple. He's not in this room either. All right, so we can't go that way. There's ordinators right at the door. They're gonna see us, and we're not really a stealthy build, so we gotta make. We go back here. There's a secret door in this area. Just gotta find it. Oh, I found it. I found it. I found it. Nobody's coming. Alright, I'm back. I, uh, got some scrolls to unlock this door because it's too much. My lock, my lockpick skill's not enough. So I have, uh, 11 of these now. And what we'll do is use it like that. Well, here we go. There's no time for hmm. Thank you for coming, Melon. Do you know the temple's doctrine on the Nereverine? Perhaps it is time to change that doctrine. The temple must protect the people from false doctrines, and your association with Imperial Intelligence makes your motivations and integrity suspect. But you have been chosen for Tator and Nereverine by the Dunmer people, and we have reached a crisis with Dagoth Ur. We can no longer defend the people against the unawakened Sixth House. And you and your prophecies may represent our last hope. Our situation is desperate, but I would rather have you hear the details of our situation and the circumstances leading up to that situation from Lord Vivek himself. He is asked to see you. Would you agree to private meeting with him and hear in person what he has to say? Yes, I will meet Vivek. Good, here are two keys, one to the private back entrance to my quarters, the other to a locked entrance to Lord Vivek's palace. I regret that, at present, the ordinators are not completely under my control. So, for now, I'll ask you to avoid confrontations with them. Lord Vivek is expecting you. His lordship is remarkably patient. Perhaps it would be better not to keep him waiting. Alright, we're down here.
Oh, I, I can. Yes. All right, so let's give Vivek a visit. Wow. Oop, almost walked off the damn thing. I'm sightseeing. There he is. I expected you. We have business, you and I. When I was young like you, I was very impatient. So I will keep our business short. Then later, there may be a time for other things. First, I propose to remove my curse upon the Nereverine, end the persecution of the distant priests, and proclaim to all Morrowind that Melon is the incarnate and Nereverine, the prophesied savior of Morrowind. And the last hope to withstand the menace of Dagothur and the sixth house. These things I will do, whether you wish or not. Next, I propose to surrender to you the power and responsibility of defeating Dagothur. You may choose to refuse. I will not compel you. You will receive the power as a gift in the form of an artifact called a Wraithguard. You may accept the gift, then do with it as you will. You will receive the responsibility as an oath. You may give your oath, then keep it, or break it as you like. First, will you accept Wraithguard as a gift? Yes. Good, sensible of you. And now, will you give your oath? Before all gods and men, for all spirits, visible and invisible, before my honor and your honor, to dedicate yourself in Wraithguard to defeat and the destruction of Degather and the preservation of Morwind and its people. Not very sensible, but very good. I was hoping for someone who would have no hesitations about making such an oath. You will now have a brief momentary sensation of time passing. Don't be alarmed. You are being taken out of time in order to avoid the unpleasant experience of learning how to use Wraithguard. It will be over before. There is a brief sensation of motion and total darkness, floating, but without a sense of weight or direction. You know it. Now, I will notify the temple that you are our champion. There shall be no more persecution of the dissident priests. I hope both sides shall swiftly be reconciled. We have time for questions, if you like, or you may leave as you wish. But I think there are at least two things you ought to know before you leave. How to use Wraithguard and how to defeat Dagothur. To defeat Dagothur, go to Red Mountain to recover the artifact Hammer Sunder from Gate Citadel Viminil. Then recover the artifact Blade Keening from Gate Citadel or Dussel. Then proceed with Wraithguard, Sunder, and Keening to the Citadel of Dagoth Ur. Within the Citadel, find the Heart of Lorcan. Use the three artifacts to sever Dagoth Ur's connection to the Heart, and he will be destroyed, and the Blight ended on Morrowind. To destroy Dagoth Ur, you must sever his connection with the Heart of Lorcan. To do this, strike the Heart with the artifact Hammer Sunder once. Then strike the heart more than once with the artifact Blade Keening. You must wear Wraithguard before you can handle either Sunder or Keening, unless you are wearing Wraithguard. That is the short, simple explanation. Here's the long, detailed explanation written down for your convenience. Read it, study it, commit it to memory. Dagoth Ur is the former Lord High Counselor of House Dagoth. He was of Lord Nerevar's generation, older than we, and mighty sorcerer and enchanted in life. In his sustained shadow immortality, he appears to be highly intelligent, severely deluded immortal, severely deluded immortal monster with unparalleled supernatural abilities. He appears by turns lucid and deranged, compassionate and bestial, profoundly wise and profoundly disordered. In short, he is a mad god. In my library, I have made available two conflicting accounts of the events of Red Mountain. My own true account and another false account common among the Ashlanders and preserved in the Apocrypha. I don't care whether you believe my account or not. I leave it up to you to judge which is true. That's the library that's in the temple. We did not murder Nerevar. The legend that we murdered Nerevar comes from a story told by a shield companion to Nerevar, Alandro Sul, who lived among the Ashlanders. The Ashlanders have retained Alandro Sul's account as part of their oral historics. 
the account is persuasive in terms of details and plausible in others. And in any other case, and is any other case false? I have two accounts in Erevar's death here in my library. Read them and judge them for yourself. I love the people of Morrowind. I became a god to make their lives more comfortable and secure. I am most close to my faithful followers. I am literally in their hearts and minds. I feel the most sympathy with the House Redren. They are dumber driven by creeds and deeds like I am. House Enderal is closer to the compassion and sympathy of Alamexia, a comfortable and secure serenity. House Telvani matches the disposition of my brother Sulta Sil, iconoclastic, profane, and unconventional. House Halalu represents the future of the Dumber, integrated into the sophisticated mainstream of the traditionalist, the raceless, godless culture of the Empire. House Dress represents the past of pre-tribunal Great House culture, a persistent tradition of Daedra, an ancestor worshipping civilized Dumber clans, and I even love the Ashlanders for their preservation of the most ancient barbarian tribal traditions of the Dumber who first settled Morrowind. Remember being mortal. I remember. I do not feel it. I can, if I choose, remember the feeling. But I do not choose. It is very, very sad being mortal. There is happiness, yes, but mostly sadness. As I have said, count only the happy hours. For mortals, they are all too few. But for gods, for me, there is no feeling, only knowing. Not quite no more feeling. I still want to win. I want to defeat Dagoth Air. Perhaps I have lost the feeling for the people, for their suffering. I don't want that feeling. It is no use to me. That is no longer what matters to me. I only want to not lose. To lose would be very, very bitter. The Dwemer. I have no idea what happened to the Dwemer. I have no sense of them in the timeless divide world, outside of mortal time. And in fact, if I did believe they existed, I would be in no hurry to make contact with them. They may, with some justice, hold the Dumber race responsible for their fate. My intuition is that they are gone forever, and that is perfectly fine with me. Damn, okay. Vivek, that's the guy. Wow, I've always seen this guy in pictures. But I never once, uh, been up here. Yeah, he doesn't say anything. He only has text dialogue. Oh, the 36 lessons of Vivek. The 36 lessons of Vivek, Sermon 12. As the Hortator pondered the first lesson of ruling kings, Vivek wandered into the morning hold and found that Iam was with a pair of lovers. Set had divided himself again. Vivek then leapt through into their likenesses to observe, but he gained no secrets that he did not already know. He left a few of his own behind to make the journey worthwhile. Then Vivek left the capital of Veloth and wandered far into the ash. He found a span of badlands to practice his giant form. He made of his feet a less dense material than the divine to keep from falling waist deep into the earth. At this point, the first corner of the House of Troubles, the Prince Molag Bal made his presence known. Vivek looked on Molag Bal and said, How very beautiful you are! that you do not join us. And Molag Bal crushed the warrior poet's feet, which were not invulnerable, and had legions cleave them off. Mighty fires from the beginning place were brought like nets to hold Vivek, and he let them. I would prefer, he said, some kind of ceremony if we are to be married. And the legions that took the feet were summoned again, and ordered to begin a banquet. Pomegranates sprang from the badlands, and tents were raised. A throng of Velothi mystics came, reading the passages of the severed feet on the ground and weeping until the scriptures were wet. We must love each other briefly, Vivek said, if at all. I am needed to counsel the Hortata in more important matters because the Dwemeri high priests stir up trouble. You may have my head for an hour. Molag Bal rose up and extended six arms to show his worth. They were decorated in runes of seduction and its reverse. They were decorated in the annotated calendars of longer worlds. When he spoke, mating monsters fell out. Where must it go, he said. I told you, Vivek said, I am meant to be the teacher of the king of the earth, A.E. Altadun Gartok Padholm. With these magic words, Molag Bal added another, Chim, which is the secret syllable of royalty. Vivek had what he needed from the Daedroth and so married him that day. 
In the hour that Bal had Vivek's head, he asked for proof of love. Vivek spoke two poems to show him such, but only the first is known. I'm not sure just how much glass it took to make your hair. Twice as much, I am sure, as the oceans have to share. Hell, my sweet, is a fiction written by those who tell the truth. My mouth is skilled at lying, and it's alibi a tooth. The sons and daughters of Vivek and Molag Bal number in the thousands. The name of the mightiest is a string of power. Gulga, Mor, Jill, Hiet, A, Whom. All right, here we go. See you, Vivek. Looks cool. Just keeping that there. Cause technically that's still gonna move if he stops it from moving. That's gonna, that's gonna collide just as it did as if he never stopped it. Not scary at all. All right. Let's actually read these plans. Dagoth Ur's Plans by Tribunal Temple. The following documents were prepared by Temple scholars and agents of the Inquisition for Lord Vivek. From interrogation of captured sleepers and other Sixth House cultists, from study of manuscripts written by cultists and victims of dream-induced mania, from interviews with Lord Vivek concerning historical campaigns against Red Mountain, and from broad conjectures and inferences made upon these materials, this is our best estimate of Dagoth Ur's motivations and objectives in this most recent phase of his war upon Morrowind. Basic Objectives 1. Establish a theocracy in Morrowind based on the worship of the newborn god, Akula Khan, Second Numidium, to be created by Dagoth Ur from the heart of Lorcan and a body constructed according to the principles and rituals pioneered by the Dwemer Kagranach. Establish the ancient heirs of House Dagoth as the god priests of Akulakan, and the sixth house of Dagoth Ur as the dominant political power in Morrowind. Through charismatic conversion, unite the Dunmer under the guidance of Dagoth Ur to battle against the foreign animals who hold Morrowind in subjection. Note, Dagoth Ur has apparently adopted the views and motivations of the Dwemer High craft lord Kagranak. In effect, he recapitulates the ancient blasphemous folly of the Dwemer. Two. Expose the false worship of the tribunal and destroy the ecclesiastical authority and political power of the temple. How much the dissident priests or the cult of the Nereverine may be controlled or influenced by the Sixth House in this regard is open to speculation. 3. Extirpate all remaining individuals of inferior and mongrel races from Morrowind. 4. Drive the Empire from Morrowind. 5. Recover ancient territories stolen by Skyrim and Argonia. 6. Extend the worship of Akulakan to all nations of Tamriel through subversion and conquest. Plans to establish and expand the Sixth House. Phase 1. Secure Red Mountain against Tribunal intruders. Deny Tribunal access to the heart, weakening the temple while securing Red Mountain for the creation of Akulakan. Keep the construction of Second Numidium a secret. Phase 2. Create passive servants in ever-widening circles around Red Mountain by broadcasting compulsions couched in dream imagery to susceptible subjects in their sleep. Establish a major operational base at Kogarun for further operations in the Ash Wastes. Establish smaller bases near small port villages and in lower-class waterfront districts in Vivek. Infiltrate and subvert smuggling syndicates. Recruit willing followers from disaffected populations, including the underworld, the poor, and rabid anti-imperial activists. Phase 3. Expand from smaller bases to other towns and villages, and recruit and indoctrinate subjects made susceptible by dream sendings. Occupy abandoned towers and ruins, and train corrupted cultists as raiders and irregular troops. Identify, discredit, and decimate possible sources of political resistance. Phase 4. Use assassination and terror to weaken, distract, and disrupt the legions and the imperial bureaucracy along with their Hlalu sympathizers. Inspire popular uprisings of the native poor against the foreign rich and powerful. Summon sleepers and dreamers to Dagoth Ur to work on second Numidium, inferring Dagoth Ur's perspectives. Dagoth Ur thinks on a large time scale, for the most part in the outside of time scale of the divine consciousness. He thinks that only obstacles of mythic scale are worth consideration. 
He believes he is fated to rule Morrowind, to free Morrowind of the Empire, and to become the new hard-loving father of Morrowind. Given that perspective, the only opposing forces Dagothur worries about are the Tribunal, the Daedra, the Emperor, and the Incarnate. With the Tribunal's loss of Sunder and Keening, and with the diminishing resources of Vivek, Almalexia, and Sothasil, Dagoth Ur believes he has permanently gained a decisive strategic advantage. On a mortal time scale, the battle may last for centuries, but the outcome is not in doubt. And a Kulakan may be a device for dramatically reducing the time scale for a decisive victory. The myth of dynamic invincibility of the Emperor and the Empire has long been an unquantifiable and intimidating threat. But recent rumors of unrest in Cyrodiil, of the Emperor's failing health, and the unsettled question of the succession have diminished the scale of that threat. Nonetheless, the revelation that the Nerevarine is a pawn of Imperial intelligence, hand-picked and sent to Morrowind by the Emperor himself, may cause Dagoth Ur considerable anxiety. The Daedra represent no coherent obstacle to Dagoth Ur. Nonetheless, their personal abilities and their influence upon their fanatic followers is considerable, their motives and actions obscure, and Dagoth Ur remains concerned about them. The Incarnate represents Saint Nerevar, a mythic force that has previously defeated Dagoth Ur, and Dagoth Ur is obsessed with this threat. At the same time, Dagoth Ur knew Nerevar personally, knew that he was a mortal man with faults and weaknesses. Dagoth Ur may have some hope of seducing or negotiating with Nerevar's reincarnation. Further, when Nerevar and the Tribunal defeated Dagoth Ur, they were strong and allied. Now the Nerevarine and the Tribunal are weak, opposed, and divided. Therefore, though the Nerevarine and the Tribunal represent the most serious threat to Dagoth Ur's plans, he still has good reason to believe that this time he will prevail. A recent timescale of Dagoth Ur's activities. Much of the following timescale is based on inference from incomplete information. Before Second Era 882, Dagoth Ur and his kin lie dreaming beneath the sills of Red Mountain. Second Era 882, Dagoth Ur and his ash vampires awake refreshed and emerge from Lower Red Mountain into the Heart Chamber. Dagoth Ur ritually binds himself and his brethren as heart whites in a ritual of his own devising. First stages of construction of Second Numidium, conceived during the long sleep, are begun by heart whites and atronach constructs in a chamber near the heart of Lorcan. Keeping the Second Numidium project a secret from the Tribunal is a high priority. Second Era, 882, the Tribunal arrive at Red Mountain for their annual ritual bathing in the heart's power. Dagoth Ur and Ash Vampires ambush the Tribunal. The Tribunes are driven away and prevented from restoring themselves with Kagranach's tools at the heart of Lorcan. Second Era, 882 to Third Era, 417. Intermittent Tribunal campaigns assault Red Mountain. The Tribunal and supporting forces seek to force access to the Heart Chamber, but are repeatedly driven back. Dagoth Ur recruits sleepers and dreamers through dream sendings. Cultists are recruited through dream compulsion. Weaker cultists become corporous beasts. Stronger cultists advance through stages towards the powers of the ascended sleepers. Third Era, 400. Kogoran reoccupied by Dagoth Uthol and fortified as an advance base for Sixth House operations. Blight storms more frequent and widespread. Soul sickness spreads in regions close to Red Mountain. Third Era, 410. Sixth House bases founded near Nar Mok and in waterfront areas of Vivek. Sixth House operatives exploit smuggler organizations and communications to spread their influence among victims unbalanced by Dagoth Ur's dream sendings. Third Era, 415, small cells of Sixth House cultists in every town in Vardenfell. Larger Sixth House operations are concealed in remote dungeons where creatures are bred and cultists are trained for the coming struggle. Third Era, 417, Almalexia and Sothasil lose the artifacts Keening and Sunder to Dagoth Odros and Vemin. Vivek rescues Almalexia and Sothasil, but failing to recover Keening and Sunder, the tribunal retreat from Red Mountain in disorder. Surviving buoyant armager companions know the Tribunal was forced to retreat, but do not know how serious a reversal the Tribunal has suffered. The three Tribunes return to their respective capitals and continue to perform their ritual functions. The Tribunes continue to grow weaker without access to the heart, 
and because of resources required to support the ghost fence. The inner circle of the temple priesthood has begun to suspect the tribunes have suffered seriously from wounds and demoralization in the wake of reverses at Red Mountain, but do not recognize the scale of the problem. Third Era, 426 to 427. Campaign of Sixth House assassinations of prominent Imperial citizens and Hlalu Imperial sympathizers. Sudden increase in number and seriousness of attacks by cultists and victims deranged by soul sickness. Noted with concern. 1. Dagoth Ur can apparently perceive and communicate directly through his cultists. Sleepers and dreamers are often reported speaking as though with Dagoth Ur's voice and intention. 2. Little is known about the features, scale, or stage of completion of Akulakan, Second Numidium. No one has gained entrance to the Heart Chamber since Second Era, 282. In Third Era, 417, Keening and Sunder were captured, and may substantially aid in Akulakan's construction. Alright. How about that? Alright. There's one quick stop, though. I want to see the statue of Azura. There's, um... Molag... What is it called? Molag Mar over there. It's basically the same structures as Vivek. Pretty cool. Passed by it earlier. Here I am. I gotta see it. Wow. That's like a whole monument. The moon and star right there. <laughs> Beautiful. Shrine of Azura. That was Azura talking directly to us. That's crazy. Okay. Oh, there they are. Should be a lot of danger over here. But I have a Daedric weapon, so I don't think I should have a huge problem. Oh, that was her. Stata. <laughs> that was her. Uh, okay. This is the ring. Shukor, that's ring. There are more Daedra here, so I'll have to get the XP from killing these Daedra. Oh, they're scattered around, aren't they? What the fuck are those? Oh. Spell drop and be like, you know... Uh. Oh. It's gonna have to do. I'm stunned. I made a mistake. These are freaky, freaky enemies. That one. Now I need to use Hearth Heal.
a day drop and these things are just oof. These are hungers. These are called hungers. Ah, oh, I don't like them. I saw them on the loading screens. Sure, I didn't kill these. I didn't kill these. Oh, is that that's a storm atronach? What on earth is that? I see I saw it on the loading screens. What the hell are you? Oh. An Ogrim. That's a Daedra. Alright, let's head back. We got the ring. Alright. Ooh. We're back. We got the ring. From the Seal Gorad region. A lot of Daedra over there. Man, there's, there's a lot. That was a lot. Well done, mortal. You have preserved the integrity of my wager with Sheogoth. Now it will end as fated, and not due to the meddling of the Daedra Prince. Take this, and use it wisely. What did she give her? Oh, Azura Star. All right, let's go to um, Red Mountain. Yep, we are in Dagoth er territory. The ghost fence. In we go. Here we are. The bite storm begins. This is gonna be crazy. Red Mountain region. Oh yes. That reminds me of red like dead money. Like I don't know why the sky was red and dead money. In a gash or whatever, I'm not sure. I'm immune to your disease. Okay. Now, we just gotta find the Sunder and Keening, wherever they are. Well, that should be fun to find. Oh gosh. Ah, they paralyze you like crazy. Well, good thing I have uh, the resistant, because otherwise I'd be dead by now, probably. Dang, these things are very difficult. I resorbed like f almost all his spells, except the paralyzation ones. Ooh, look at the moons, the planets. Love it. There it is, over there. Wow, we are high up. Ah. What? What? Yeah, we are very high up here. Wow. Come on, I can fight that. I can fight it. And that this whole blight storm and like ash storm and everything comes from outside the mountain. Like I'm the inside of the mountain. I really am doing it this way. I love it. Here we go. Oh yeah. F Fudge off. Yeah, I passed it. <laughs> Femio, out of focus. Ooh, yes. Ah, my illusions. Oh, it's a bone walker. I think I'll walk like that. I know glass is better than ebony. Oh, hi. Oh, he hurt himself and deflected off me. <laughs> That's gold. 
There we go. Ooh, chest. Ebony arrow, iron arrow. I don't want that shit. It's good. It's good loot if you're uh, a mage, not a mage, a archer. This place is not a maze. Ah, come on. Dramora. I think it's Dramora. The Dramora Lord, yeah. Trophonax. We're doing pretty good. I think. Just want to get leveled up high enough. Or take on Dangothera. So these Ash Vampires and everything will, will probably do the trick. Um, talk me to death. I think it's been really difficult. Oh, I love this sword. Sunder. Wait, where's that ladder go? Is that it? It is. We got Keening. We have both the requirements now. We're back here. We have all the requirements. It's time to plunge ourselves into Degather Caverns. Here it is. Here, 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 here. Bingo. We in there. Yeah. So we're about to see the, the second Numidium. The first one was in Daggerfall. Now it's time to see the second one. A cool car. Come, Nerevar, friend or traitor, come. Come and look upon the heart and a cool car. And bring Wraithguard. I have need of it. Come to the heart chamber. I wait for you there where we last met countless ages ago. It's crazy. Oh, hi. Dang, I take care of these guys quick. Quick. Where's the main chamber at? Come to me through fire and war. I welcome you. Welcome, Moon and Star. I have prepared a place for you. So dark, I can't see a thing. What? Well, I'm taking all that if I even can. Bone walkers, man. Ooh. Welcome, Nerevar. Together we shall speak for the law and the land and shall drive the mongrel dogs of the Empire from Morrowind. Lower facility. Should be okay. Ash Vampire, let's look is this so how you honor the sixth house and drive on morn. Come to me openly and not by stealth. Blood ring. Amulet. Amulet. You level up. You have ascended to level 13. It's the most amazing thing. Yesterday it was hard. Today it is easy. Just a good night's sleep. And yesterday's mysteries are today's masteries. 
Good luck. Yeah. Facility Cavern. I'm gonna save right here, you guys. That's where it goes. <laughs> Welcome, Moon and Star, to this place where destiny is made. It began here. It will end here. Have you any parting words? Or would you prefer to skip the speeches and get to our business? You were the challenger here, after all. So to you goes the courtesy of the first blow. Our business. I have won this place by power and the right of conquest, but right of daring enterprise. I will not risk it all. I will not risk it to cunning and deceit. Offer you no deals. If you are my enemy, I cannot, I cannot trust you. And even if you are not my enemy, I cannot let you live. It will be all decided here. I believe I will prevail, but I cannot be sure. And I am vain enough that. Should I fall? I would wish to be remembered in my own words. So if you have final questions you would ask, ask them. I have final questions I would ask you if you would answer. My first question is, are you really Nerevar Reborn? By the grace of gods and fate, I am Nerevar Reborn. That is bitter. The gods and fates are cruel. I have served you faithfully once, Lord Nerevar, and you repaid me with death. I hope this time it will be you who pays for your faithfulness. My second question is, if you win, what do you plan to do with the power from the heart? Will you make yourself a god and establish a theonomy? Or will you complete a Kulikon and dispute control of Tamriel with the Septums? Or will you share the heart with your followers, as I have, and breed a new race of divine immortals? I will share the heart. You have a noble spirit. I share the power I have from the heart to help free mortals from their ancient fears of the gods. Who knows what we may be capable of once we no longer fear death. Your goal is worthy, and I honor you for it. My final question is, if I had offered to let you join me, would you have surrendered Wraithguard, Sunder and Keening to me to seal your oath? No, I would never surrender the tools. An interesting response. You might have been willing to join me, but never to surrender the tools? Very interesting. I'm glad I didn't try to bargain with you. And now, if you have any questions, ask them. Otherwise, you are the challenger. I await your first blow. Very well, if you were impatient to begin, go ahead. You are the challenger, to you goes the first blow. There's no way. No. That was too easy, there's no way. And that was the first and the only blow. <laughs> oh, it's right there. Oh my gosh. That's crazy. Okay. You got it. What a fool you are. I'm a god. How can you kill a god? What a grand and intoxicating innocence. How could you be so naive? There is no escape. No recall or intervention can work in this place. Come, lay down your weapons. It is not too late for my mercy. Cool. Miss me. I can't let him hit me. I'll die if he hits me. Even once. <laughs> One dig out there. Oops, deflected. Ooh, okay, that was a good hit. It didn't do much though. Come on, come on. Now is not the time. To be failing. It's a big place. Uh, that didn't do shit. Can you actually kill him just normally? Oh, he's invincible. Okay, gotcha. Because of the heart. He's he's a god. He's basically protected. But if I defeat the heart. Come on.
Numidium 2.0. There it is. New medium. Very interesting. The heart. We must make Degather mortal again. Bam. Bam. Okay. Okay. And then we got a keening. One, two, three, four, five. This is the end. The bitter, bitter end. No, don't fail. You're mortal now. Yeah, here we are. His shield's gone and everything. This is crazy. Oh, he fell. I didn't have to kill him. He, f he fell off the bridge. Oh my god. I didn't even have to. I thought he was going to be like a, like a spongy and like any. He fell in the lava and bit and died as a mortal. <laughs> that was keeping him alive. But oh crap. Also, it fixed the tribunal, wouldn't it? Oh, I'm not sure what's about to happen. But the Nubidium Akulakan has been defeated before it was even finished. And Degoth Er wasn't. I mean, we had to have those items. He was basically invincible. If we didn't have those items, we could never kill him. There she is. You no longer bear the burden of prophecy. You have achieved your destiny. You are free. The doom to Emer's folly, Lord Dagoth's temptation, the tribunal's seduction, the god's heart freed, the prophecy fulfilled. All fate sealed and sins redeemed. If you have pity, mourn the lost, but let the weeping cease. The blight is gone, and the sun's golden honey gilds the land. Hail, Saviour! Hortator and Nerevarine, your people look to you for protection. Monster and villains, great and small, still threaten the people of Vardenfell. Enemies and evils abound, yet indomitable will might rid Morrowind of all its ills. For you, our thanks and blessing, our gift and token given. Come, take this thing from the hand of God. Thank you, Azura. And she's gone. The good Daedra. Ring of Azura. Alright. Let's leave this facility and get out of here. No more ash storms. Those are all gone. The bite storms gone. The ash vampires that existed and any other six house member has now perished. Because Degothur was the link to it all. Wow, this is so cool. No, 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 let's go see Vivec. But what's still gonna remain is the cliff racers. Oh, yeah, the ghost fence is off. <laughs> yeah. Alright, let's go see Vivek. Right, back in Vivek. So I'm assuming it didn't work immediately before the tribunal. That's still being held up. That's from the powers that the heart gave him. Vivek, anyway. Oh, look at that. The quest list. The DLCs are left. We did all the side quests. We did the main quest. And a bunch of other little... Some Daedric quests as well in between. This is all we got left. And that's Blood Moon and that's Tribunal. So we can give Vivek a little visit, but... Other than that, we're finished.
the blight is gone and we have survived to rebuilding the temple and you must dedicate yourself to your responsibilities as protector of Morrowind. I'm Alexia. We don't communicate. Without the heart, our divine powers must diminish. She takes her divinity very seriously and the loss weighs heavily on her. She tends to brood and I fear she will do herself and others harm. I do not hear from him since our defeat at Red Mountain. Truly, I scarcely ever heard from him. He is completely self-absorbed, like myself without the heart. His divine powers will diminish, but I doubt he will notice the loss. He is fascinated by the hidden world and its mysteries, and I doubt he even notices us most of the time. Is that the right move? Because, I mean, now Morrowind will be destroyed inevitably from Bardo, impacting the province. Hence why in Skyrim, we see the Dunmer migrate from Vardenfell, because when you're on Solfsheim in Skyrim, you see the volcanic, the volcano erupting, and you see the ash, everything everywhere there, from the impact of the meteor. And hence you see a bunch of Dunmer in Skyrim, particularly on the Windhelm side and like the like the the east side of Skyrim. So here we go. We have survived, but we have lost our divine powers, but not altogether. Some token of the people's faith remains, and we shall dedicate it to rebuilding the temple. Now that Degoth Ur is gone, we can turn our energies to the more humble needs of the people. It is good, honest work, and I believe there is redemption in it. Alright, Vivek. Excellently well said. Alright. We're finished. There's also housing as well. I haven't got a house yet. I'll get a house eventually. But for now, we are done with the main story of Morrowind. You know what, guys? I'll cut it off here. This is a big episode. We completed the main story of Morrowind, along with sealing off any other side quests that we did and some daydream quests within it as well. We had conversations with Dagother and Vivek. We did it. We beat the Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind main story. Now what's left is to get some housing. Why not? Let's put some stuff, you know, do some other things. But all the six house members are dead. There's no more Ash Vampires. So uh, all the enemies are dead. So I did all the danger quests I wanted to do. I did Azuras. So and now we have Blood Moon and Tribunal. So anyway, guys, I'll see you on the next episode of The Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind. Where we tackle the DLCs and maybe get some housing.